see you. Good to be in the house of the Lord, and I hope that you're having a good uh, Sunday today. As I was uh, preparing this message, I was thinking about the battles that we fight today, and I listened to that song uh, quite a few times and just kind of closed my eyes and, and meditated on the fact that the battle belongs to the Lord. Well, today and this summer, we are in the middle of a series, Summer of Psalms. We uh, have two messages left. Tyler's going to uh, preach uh, next week. I'll be here uh, next week, but Tyler is going to bring us another message out of the book of Psalms, and then we'll have one final message uh, before uh, we kick off a new series, Fresh Start, as we start uh, to prepare for the school year, which some of you are like, yes, I'm ready, and some of you are like, no, I am not ready for that to happen. So that is right around the corner. Uh, today's message, uh, for those of you who are uh, here and listening and watching and, and online, great to have you here, is entitled, uh, Don't Envy the Wicked. Don't envy uh, the wicked. And as Christians, uh, we're losing ground. <laughs> we're losing ground today, and we will continue to lose ground. Why is that? Well, because the world around us is under the control of the evil one. Uh, this world that we live in today is under the control of the evil one. You say, well, Ed, how do we know that? Well, we can just look at our world today as evidence of that. However, John tells us that here in 1 John 5, 19, uh, he says, we know that we are children of God and that the world around us, the world that we live in is under the control of the evil one is under the control of the evil one. Well, what does this mean? What does it mean for you and me? It, it could mean, it may mean that uh, we're tempted to give in to them <laughs> or even envy them. Why? Because it appears as if they're winning the battle. Right? If we look at where our world is going today and how things are happening and, and everything being changed and transformed, it appears as if they're winning this battle. However, they're not really winning. In fact, David says they'll soon die. They'll soon die. Psalm 37 is the psalm we're going to look at today. And David says this in verses 1 and 2. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. What is it we should be doing in today's world? In this world that we live in today, what is it we should be doing? Well, we should be trusting in the Lord and doing good, right? That's what you and me should be doing. Trusted in Jesus and doing good. Why? Because David says if we're trusting in the Lord and doing good, doing what's right, then we're going to live safely in this land and we're going to prosper. He says it like this in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. What's our problem today? I think we've stopped trusting in the Lord and doing good. I think we, you and me, have stopped trusting in the Lord and doing good. What are we trusting in? Are we trusting in ourselves? Are we trusting in our political party? Trusting in ourselves and our political party won't help us. Instead, we must delight ourselves in the Lord. We must seek Jesus. Why? Because he is the only one who can give us what our heart desires. Oh, I love this classic verse here in Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. I remember as a child, my mom quoting this verse to me. It's a verse I memorized, but I think it was for all the wrong reasons. 
It was in order to get what I wanted, right? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart, right? I'll be a better basketball player if I just delight myself in the Lord. He'll, he'll give me whatever it is that I want. As a child growing up, that's what I thought. When you truly delight yourself in the Lord, that is when you seek him and desire to become more like him, when you truly delight yourself in the Lord, you end up wanting what he wants. You end up wanting what he wants. You remember Jesus said in going to the cross, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, your desire is my desire. What does this mean for us? It means we need to commit everything we do to the Lord. That's what it means. It means we need to commit everything we do to the Lord. Why? Because we want our desires to line up with his desires. That's what we ultimately want. Not my will, but your will be done. We want our desires to line up with his desires. David says it like this in 5 and 6. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. I don't know what cause you're fighting for today. I don't know what cause you're fighting for today. We all have a cause that we're fighting for, a battle, right? We all have a battle or a cause that we're interested in and that we're, we're passionate about and that we're fighting for. If you don't have one, then you need to have one. It should be the Great Commission. Right? That's what all of our cause and battle should be, is, is fighting for that. When Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Right? That should be all of our, our, our causes and our battle. But no doubt you have a specific battle or a cause that you're involved with or, or in today that you're fighting for. And I don't know what that cause is, but we all have one. This I do know. If you'll commit that cause to the Lord, if you'll commit it to the Lord and trust him with it, he will help you. He will help you fight that battle, whatever that battle is that you're fighting right now. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a, a school board issue. Uh, maybe it's an issue at work with your boss. He will make the justice of your cause shine like the noonday sun. Why? Well, when you commit everything you do to the Lord, your cause now becomes his cause and vice versa. But Ed, there are people who oppose me. They don't want me to do what I'm doing where I'm at right now. Don't you worry about them. Don't you worry about them. You be still and wait patiently for the Lord to act. But Ed, I'm angry. Well, you know what? It's okay to be angry. However, you need to turn from your rage. <laughs> In other words, don't lose your temper. Why? Because that only leads to harm. David said it like this in verse 7 and 8. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act in your situation. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Don't lose your temper. It only leads to harm. It's so true. Friday, I, I kind of lost my temper a little bit, and I thought about it all weekend, and I was like, man, I'm so aggravated by the way that I acted. And now I got to preach on the way that I acted, which is the opposite. <sighs> right now you may be saying, but Ed, these people appear to have the upper hand. 
right? These people or this group or this cause that I'm fighting against or for, it appears as if they have the upper hand the way they're running this, the administration or whatever it might be. Well, that may be true. It won't last forever. It won't last forever. David says it like this in 9 through 11. For the wicked will be destroyed. Though, but those who trust in the Lord, those who trust Jesus, will possess the land. Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land and will live in peace and prosperity. How do we know that we will one day live in peace and prosperity? How do we know this? That one day we're going to live in peace and prosperity. Because the Lord assures us of this. He assures us of this. First, he says their day of judgment is coming. Their day of judgment, it's coming. Continuing on in verse 12 and 13. The wicked plot against the godly. They snarl at them in defiance. But the Lord just laughs. For he sees their day of judgment coming. Second, their swords will stab their own hearts. In other words, what goes around comes around. It's going to come back against them. Verses 14 and 15, David says, The wicked draw their swords and string their bows to kill the poor and the oppressed, to slaughter those who do what's right, right? Those who do what's right today are, are made out to be bad. But their swords will stab their own hearts. It's going to come back against them. And their bows will be broken. Third, the strength of the wicked will be shattered. Their strength is going to fall apart. What appears to be a stronghold, the Lord's going to knock that stronghold down. Why? Because he always wins the battle. Verses 16 and 17. It is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and rich. For the strength of the wicked will be shattered... But the Lord takes care of the godly. The Lord takes care of the godly. Fourth, they're going to disappear like smoke. Right? We had some smoke here on, on Friday. The last few days is hard to breathe, right? Hard to see. David says they're going to disappear like smoke. Before you know it, they'll be gone. It might be here for a short time, but they'll be gone. Verses 18 through 20. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent. He hasn't forgotten about you. And they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. Think about what we're one day going to receive. An inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. But the wicked, they're going to die. The Lord's enemies are like flowers in a field. They will disappear like smoke. How do we know we will one day prosper, have peace and prosperity? The Lord assures us of this. Fifth, those he curses will die. Those he curses will die. Verses 21 and 22. The wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly are generous givers. Those the Lord blesses will possess the land, but those he curses will die. The Lord has assured us that one day <laughs> he will take care of those people who oppose us, those people who are against us, those people that we feel like we're always fighting with or against. <laughs> Right now you may be asking, however, is he really aware of what's going on in my life right now? Because I'm in a battle. I'm in this cause, and we're fighting a battle right now. Is he really aware? Of course he is. He's the one directing your steps. He delights in every detail of your lives. Jesus said, even the very hairs on your head are numbered. 
doesn't have too many to count now that I've lost some of mine. <laughs> he knows every detail of our lives. We may stumble, David says, but we will never fall. Why? Because the Lord is the one who is holding us by the hand. Listen to what David says in 23 and 24. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He's directing you. Stay close to him. Lean into him during this time. He delights in every detail of their lives. You may think, well, this is too small, or, or, or God doesn't know, or he doesn't see. He knows. He knows about every little detail of the situation. He's aware. Though they stumble, right? Some days you may feel like, man, I, I don't know that I'm going to make it. They will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Did David believe God takes care of his people? David's the one who wrote this. Did he really believe that God takes care of us, that he takes care of his people? Yes. Listen to what he says here. Verse 25 and 26. Once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. The godly always give generous loans to others, and their children are a blessing. Oh, man, Eden Joy, she's such a blessing. That little girl uh, of ours, I just like hugging her all the time. She'll say, Daddy, don't hug me. <laughs> I said, Daddy loves you. You know Daddy loves you? No doubt David's children were a blessing. However, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba, he lost that child. Why? Because that was one of the consequences for his sin. Because David turned from his sin, the Lord blessed him with another child, Solomon. Here's a question. Have you turned from your sin? Have you turned from the thing you know you shouldn't be doing? If you turn from your sin and do good, do what's right, you'll live forever. Why? Because the Lord loves it when we do what is right. I always pray, Lord, help me to do what is right. Because I don't always want to do what's right. And please forgive me when I do what is wrong. Verses 27 through 29. David says, turn from evil. Turn from that garbage, that filth, that, that thing you know you shouldn't be doing. Turn from it. Stop doing it and do good. And you will live in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice and he will never abandon the godly. He will keep them safe forever, but the children of the wicked will die the godly will possess the land and live there forever. If we want to live forever, and who doesn't want to live forever, what else do we need to do? David says we need to teach others right from wrong. We need to tell other people about Jesus. Here's what's right, right? And here's what's wrong in our world today. That's the battle we face. People are lost. They're confused. They no longer know right from wrong. So we need to teach them, here's what's right and here's what's wrong. Uh, Eden, <laughs> our little daughter, uh, uh, always asking questions when she sees things. Why, why are they doing that? <laughs> right? Commercials on TV. A lot, of, a lot of explaining to do in today's, why is that happening? <laughs> right? Well, let me teach you the difference between right and wrong. Not only do we need to teach others what is right from wrong, but make God's law our own. Make his word our own. Right? Internalize it. Personalize it. Spend time with the Lord and his word. Refreshing and renewing our mind. So, so that we know what the truth is. If we do this, David says we will never slip or fall. Right? If we, we stay close to him, making God's law our own, making his word our own, knowing it inside and out. That's why we read it and meditate it on it and think about it. 
David says this in 30 and 31. The godly offer good counsel. People out there today, they need good counsel, good counseling, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You're just starting to become wise when you spend time alone with God and His Word. If you're not spending time alone with God and His Word, then, then you're not even at the starting block of the race. <laughs> I'm watching Olympics around the clock. I don't know about you. But Monica was in the kitchen last night. I'm like, you got to come in here. It's the women's final 100 meter. The fastest woman in the world. How cool is that to have that title? The fastest man or woman in the world. Right, and they're in that starting block and you know, they're, they're down there and all of a sudden, man, they just take off like a shot. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. So cool, right? The starting block for the Christian is getting in God's Word, right? That's when you really begin to take off. When you spend time alone with God in His Word every day. The godly offer good counsel. Why? Because they're in His Word. They teach right from wrong because they know right from wrong. They have made God's law their own. It's a part of who they are. So they will never slip from His path. The reason people slip is because they're not in His Word and they're not in His house. And before they know it, they start to conform to the pattern of this world. They start to act and think like everybody else out there acts and thinks today. Lost and confused. What's happening right now in our world? What's happening right now in our world today? People are waiting in ambush for the godly. Everything's backwards in our world today. What's happening? People are waiting in ambush for the godly, for those who do right. They're looking for an excuse to kill us. If you're living for Jesus, right, and you're doing what's right and following his word, they're looking for an excuse to kill us. But the Lord will not let them succeed. He will not let us be condemned when we're put on trial. So stand up and stand tall in your situation. I don't know what situation you're involved in right now. I don't know what cause you're fighting for. But you stand up and you stand tall. In other words, put your hope in the Lord. You stay on the path that he's called you to be on. You're in the position, in the place where you're at, because that's where God wants you to be. So you stay on that path. The path that he's called you to be on. Why? Because he's going to honor you. You stay faithful to the work he's called you to. Continuing on. Verse 32, the wicked wait in ambush for the godly, looking for an excuse to kill them. But the Lord will not let the wicked succeed or let the godly be condemned when they are put on trial. Put your hope in the Lord. Just think about that. For Put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope in Jesus. Travel steadily along his path. He will honor you by giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. Don't worry about what everyone else around you is doing. Sometimes we get caught up in what everyone else around us is doing. Don't, don't you worry about that. Well, I don't know what they're doing, what, what they're planning. Why? Why don't you worry about what everyone else is doing? Because they're going to one day disappear. Instead, look at those who are honest and good. That's what David says. Look at those who are honest and good. What do we know about those who are honest and good? A wonderful future awaits them. Why? Because they love peace. David says it like this. Verse 35. I've seen wicked and ruthless people flourishing like trees. In its native soil. I've seen these wicked people. It looks like they're doing fine. Right? What they're doing is crazy. But, but it looks like they're just flourishing today. But when I looked again, they were gone. Though I searched for them, I could not find them. 
Look at those who are honest and good. For a wonderful future awaits those who love peace. But the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. Maybe peace is what's missing right now in your family and at work. Maybe, maybe, just maybe peace is what's missing right now in your family or at work or in your situation. What is it I want you to know? What is it David wants you to know as the Lord spoke through him? First, the Lord rescues the godly. Second, he helps them. Third, he saves them. He rescues and helps and saves. He's here to rescue you, to help you, and to save you. Listen to what David says, 39 and 40. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress. We saw in the song, almighty fortress. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them. And they find shelter in him. How do we know this is true? How do we know these things are true? Because David experienced this in his life. You may remember he fought a giant named Goliath. (laughs) Just how big was this giant he was fighting, this battle? He was over nine feet tall. For 40 days... He defied the armies of the living God. However, David wouldn't let Goliath disrespect his God. Oh, no. You're not going to disrespect my God. Do you remember what he said to Goliath? Let's wrap up here with this passage in 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword spear and javelin but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord, He rescues His people. He takes care of His people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle. We fight on our knees, right? We pray, and we depend on Him. We put our trust in Him. It's the Lord's battle, and He will give you to us. David defeated the giant. Why? Because the Lord was with him. (laughs) That's how he was able to defeat this giant. Because the Lord was with him. I don't know what giant you're facing today. I don't know what giant you're facing today. Maybe it's a board. Maybe it's a committee. Maybe it's administration. Maybe it's a health issue. Right? But it's a giant. Maybe it's the boss. Maybe it's the company. But in your mind, it's a giant. Whatever it is, the Lord is with you. And he will help you defeat it. Whatever it is. He has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And he hasn't forgotten about you. The Lord rescues the godly, he helps them, and he saves them. So you stay on the path he has called you to be on. You keep focusing on where he has placed you to be, and you work hard, and you trust that he's going to bless you. He's aware of what's going on in your life. He's the one directing your steps. He knows every detail of your lives. And you may stumble, but you're not going to fall. Why? Because it's the Lord who's holding you by the hand. Trust Him. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Ed, I, I haven't committed this to the Lord, this thing in my life, this situation. I haven't committed my heart and myself to the Lord. 
Maybe you'd like to do that this morning. Oh, I pray that you would. We're going to give you the opportunity here in a moment to pray, to ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Ed, I'm a Christian, but this situation has gotten bigger than me in my life, and I just can't handle it anymore. I need prayer, because it's become a giant that I can't conquer. It's a battle that I'm losing right now. Would you pray for me? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. It's powerful and it's convicting. Maybe you're here this morning with heads bowed and eyes closed and you say, Ed, I'm in a battle right now and I feel as if I'm losing that battle. And I need Jesus. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. I need him to save me from myself. I'd like to ask him into my heart. How do I do that? Well, we're going to lead you in a prayer. A prayer that you pray softly and quietly in your heart to the Lord. As you repeat these words after me. And here they are. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to come into my heart and change me. And make me like you. If you just pray that prayer, God will honor that prayer. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, Ed, I'm a Christian. But I'm in a situation right now where I just don't know what to do. And I feel like I'm losing this battle. Would you pray for me? Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray for myself. In these battles that we face every day. I pray that you'd help us to trust you. To be still and wait patiently for you to act. That when we get angry, that we may not turn that anger into rage. Because that will only lead to harm. But that you may help us to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of your gospel. Help us, Lord Jesus, because we know we cannot defeat this giant or these giants in our lives without you. But we know with you... All things are possible. And so, Lord, we give this battle to you because the battle belongs to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.